Hi everyone, today I have Spellbinders Glimmer of the Month for March of 2023. I believe it is called So Kind of You, just like the sentiment here says. Um, so this is what's available now for March, so if you sign up anytime in March, I think the window closes on the 27th, this is what you'll be receiving as far as the Glimmer. And um, they did send these items free of charge from my review, of course, all opinions are my own, and any links out in the description box will be affiliate links, which means I'll make a small commission if you purchase items through those links. So thanks for using those if you'd like to there. Um, yeah, so this month, I believe it does come with this blue foil, cobalt blue. It does say colors may vary, but that's generally uh, the one you will receive, so a nice and different color. Um, and then I've already done a whole unboxing of all the club kits, so I'll link that video in the description box, but we talked about all these different things. So basically you have this plate, and essentially you're to, if you want to do this design right, you would, you would um, foil on the top of your card base, or topper piece, and then foil down at the bottom, and then you have this piece here that you can also just foil, kind of nestle in there, you know, with the design. Or you can fold under the piece of paper, cut it out, and you have that piece of layer. And then you also have this little scalloped oval with the word so kind of you if you want to cut it out. Or maybe you just want to nestle it all flat. You know, however it is that you want to play around with that. So uh, what I'm going to do is grab some paper. Again, the smoothest paper you have. I know Spellbinders has some specialty um, cardstock that is for foiling, so it's really smooth. Um, I like to use like a heavier weight heavier weight smooth paper and if that comes from you know the whatever I have in my stash it might be from Michael's from Joann's from Hobby Lobby you know from Spellbinders it's just uh, I just feel my papers and see what feels nice and heavy and uh, smooth so I will turn on my glimmer and I'll be right back you know just do something different I think I'm gonna foil everything I was gonna go ahead and foil some different piece of paper and cut it out but why not let's just do a whole page of foil and then we'll have this so kind of you popped up with its own foiling so I'll open this guy up and we are going to get started so I'll start with this guy in the center just so I know you know we have enough room for this guy to be down here later and also to work on the top and that looks pretty good and this is a, a piece of paper again I had mentioned white earlier I usually foil on white paper but this time this is some spellbinders like lilac paper um, from a club kit and it's four and a quarter by five and a half so I'm just going to make sure like I said I have room uh, I'll probably trim it down afterwards is why I'm just kind of still getting a center but not too worried about it uh, let's see I will need a piece of this at least right here for now just to kind of keep that I'm gonna go ahead and take this off and then size a piece of this just to fit under this area you don't want too too much because you don't want extra foiling you know all that kind of thing so I'm just gonna eyeball about how much I need and I'll be right back I think I trimmed a piece that's about right and again you can trim it left and right also um, which maybe I'll do so let's just take a little bit off that you can use that I'm sure you have another sentiment, even that's so kind of you would actually can use that, so maybe we'll use that. Uh, okay, so I like to do where I see what I'm doing, so they call it the hinge method there at Spellbinder. So basically what you're seeing here, I have my plate facing down, of course. You're going to take your, um, your foil and you're just going to pick this up just a little bit so it kind of tucks under there and hits all the spots there, and then you hinge this back down. Now, when you're doing it this way, you definitely want your color facing you because the foil is going to push into that or your foil plate and the blue will stay facing you. If you set it up on here, you're going to put your plate face up, your foil with the silver side facing you, and then your paper face down, whatever side of the paper you want to use. So it's a little bit different. And I just want to make sure that we're really hitting every spot. So I'm going to pick that up just a little bit just to make sure. Again, there we go. Just making sure. And once this guy, as soon as you turn in, turn in, <laughs> turn your glimmer on, um, the switch here on the side, oh sorry, in the back, um, it just turns on so the power just starts up and your platform is ready when it says platform ready. Um, like I had mentioned, is this big enough for this? Oh, it is. Okay, so maybe I'll do that just on a white piece of paper so that my paper or my uh, design is purple paper, blue foiling, and then for the sentiment it'll be a little while white piece of paper that we die cut. Okay, this guy says he's ready. Um, and for me, I just wait a little bit longer, so I'm just going to give it a couple seconds more. I'm going to pop this onto a white piece of paper right, and I'll be right back. Run through this one first. It's my sentiment. 
again the blue facing us because I have that facing down and you pop it on here just like this I like to put the plates on top already some people will do and some people don't do whatever you like I use both plates if your paper's a little bit thinner maybe you want to add another paper shim um, we're gonna press timer down here and when it stops blinking that's when I know that that is ready so essentially it's reading the plate making sure it's hot enough and it says oh it's hot enough now and that means it's ready to be foiled I'm gonna run through my Spellbinders Platinum 6 of course it goes through the larger Platinum um, Big Shot and several other machines that they will let you know they're on Spellbinders site what they're combat compatible with but I'll get this guy ready and I'll come back when the timer stops um, oops uh, stops blinking. And always make sure that your plate is touching the surface facing up because I'm telling you I'll say that and I will still run it through not that way. <laughs> I'm like what are you thinking? So um, otherwise it's more like a letter press right? Um, if you're if you put it on there so that the um, plate isn't touching. So let me put this over here. Let's get this guy back in here so it can stay warm for the next one. Let's pick this guy up and see what we got. Look at that, so nice. And again, what I mean is if you put it on here like this with the plates up on top, it'll warm up and it'll tell you it's ready, but it just pushes into this plastic or um, kind of rubbery mat, whatever this is, silicone, I suppose. And it just does like a letter press and then barely foiled because it's not touching the heat that it needs to, you know? So there we have that, all right. And again, if I had foil this on a larger piece of paper, you can de definitely trim it down and then you would have the opposite. So if I put this like on another piece of paper, this so kind of you would show the piece of paper color and then the little blue um, rectangle would be there. But uh, it says my platform is ready, so let's go with our, with our next thing. Now you might ask, why don't you just put both of them at the same time since you're going to do... I just don't like doing that. <laughs> so I think for the best foiling, give yourself time and space for each thing even you know if I do a couple at a time I'll put one maybe up here and one like down here um, just to give it space for it to really do its thing so that's just my personal preference all right I'm gonna wait for the timer to stop and I'll be okay, back guys so the timer went off and to be honest I started peeling the um, foil for the next one and I don't know if I did a little overheating here so let's get that going and rolled through and sometimes I'll roll back in the opposite direction just to give it a really good press. <laughs> so let's do that. And I'll pop this on here. And ooh, my paper's reacting to the heat. You see that? Oh, maybe it's hard to see on camera. Oh, that looks really nice. So let's get that going. Cute. And that centerpiece obviously is not there. Okay. So this guy's nice and hot. So again, you can definitely use um, shims of paper to help you get this stuck onto like another paper or you use those cool dies or I guess they're not really dies, the uh, plates that Spellbinders put out that'll help you use this image on something else later. It just gives you the thickness that you need for that to push into the next thing. So we're gonna be done with this. Like I said, I did cut another one for the next guy. And that's basically gonna be here. Now I'm just a little bit scared because I already have that foiling there. But my platform is ready, and this should go like this. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, okay, so we're gonna put this. I'm putting it right down the center of this, just so I can get that on there. And I'll bring this over again, the color facing me, and I'll place that there and see if we have it where we need it to be. I don't want to. Oh, you know what? I don't want to overlap too, too much in the foiling because honestly I don't know what that would do or what that would look like, but I guess it'd probably be okay, huh? So let's bring this up a little more. We gotta get into that, those nooks and crannies of our, of our plate, right? So even though it's overlapping there a little bit and then bring it down a little bit here. I'm gonna replace my tape in just a second. I have to move the foil just a little bit. And let's bring that down and then put this back up where it was. Just about. Alright, just about there. Something like that. Okay. So now I'm just going to pop this again. Plate touching the surface there. I like to put my plates down. And timer. Okay. And once that's ready, I'll run it through and I'll be back. 
So this time I was intently staring at it and the timer went off. So again, I like to bring it in and bring it back. So I'm gonna roll it through. And roll it back. Plug it in because we still need that heat. Oh, let's check this out. Um, I do have my magnetic piece, but I'll just pick it up. Wow. Uh, carefully doing this because it's very hot. And look at that. And what a gorgeous design. I'm sorry. I'll just put that to the side for now, but I just want to sh show you how like clean that comes out and then you know, again use a cool plate that helps you transfer it to something else and then that's our other part of our design. And I'm going to do exactly the same on this side, so I already have a piece cut. Again I kind of had to overlap it a little bit right because that one plate kind of tucks into the design here. And when this cools off just a little bit for me to handle it a little bit easier I'm going to go ahead and pop that on, put it on my platform and do the process and I'll be back. Just something like that. I just left that up here on top. I guess I could move it. Let's move it over here. All right. And again, towards the middle. And I'll press timer and get it going and run it through and I'll be back. It's taking a second or two to heat up. I'm just going to run this through and I'm eyeballing that completely. <laughs> and um, whenever I mention when you go to, you know, put your tape so this doesn't move, try not to get the tape on your foiling because you definitely don't want that to pick up off of your um, die cut. Okay. So I'll be back. So run this puppy through and like I said I go forward and then I'll come back <laughs> so forward and then back just for good measure if your plates shift in the meantime while you're doing that do not run it back because then you're gonna have like a double kind of impression so just don't do that but it's just something I like to do so let's get this guy off Ooh, nice and hot I'm telling you guys this is so once you find a machine that just foils so well <laughs> It's just a pleasure, because I'm telling you, you guys have seen my other videos when I had another machine, it's, ah, it can be frustrating, but this is just awesome. Um, it all looks really great. I mean, there's like a little, like, I don't know if you see that one's not like super open in the center. So what you can do is just grab like an eraser and people ask me where I got this eraser. It's just from Daiso Japan. Uh, just any eraser. Let me turn this off because I think we're done. Um, and just go over it with the flat side, right? If you have one of those big pink erasers or whatever, just kind of go in here and just do this kind of thing and it'll just clear that up. So whatever little overfoiling you might have, just kind of opens it up. Okay, uh, let me put everything away and I'll so be right back. Our little deck, how cute is that? And again, it's just going to nestle in there, you know, really cute. Now, I think I lined that up pretty well and if I cut it down, I might have to cut it down in a way that I don't want to, you know what I'm saying? So let me see. Uh, I'm gonna see if I can take a little bit off the edge just because my card base is this blue card and actually this was a five by seven excuse me actually it was a five by seven and I just cut it down to four and a quarter by five and a half so I'm gonna take a little bit off of each edge but honestly this is lined up really really nicely so I'll be right back just because I like that little just bit of an edge a little bit I mean a sixteenth off of each side so again ends up being about five and three eighths by four and an eighth uh, maybe a little bit bigger than that just because I got right on the edge of those um, designs. So the design is definitely helpful for an A2 size card. And I'm just going to pop this on here. And it's just like a royal blue card base. And I do want that to flatten out really well so what I'll probably do is place like a something... Oh, here we go. Something like this on here. And I'm going to put my Platinum 6 on that for a second. And I'm going to get some uh, dimensional adhesive on the back of this and I'll be back. I'm going to take that off just a few minutes. Oopsie. And there is nice and flat on there. And then we have our little sentiment. And I'm just going to pop that right in the center a little bit further down. Super cute because the little design really nestles into that so it's very obvious that it was made for that, you know, right in there. 
how cute and you know it's simple card again you can even put the sentiment with the foil you have with the foiling right on this you know your card base so or your topper so it's all like a note card kind of thing but thanks for watching guys hopefully I gave you some idea on how to use these uh, lots of mix and match ability with it uh, thank you so much Bell Blinders for sending these items for review uh, images uh, for you coming up I'll have the links in the description box and I'll see you all at the next one bye now